Hey guys, welcome back, welcome back, John Megacycle, another episode of Command & Conquer General Zero Hour. How you doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm doing quite fine, quite fine. My wife, I'm quite fine. <laughs> Poor hat, sorry. Um, anyway, I've gotten a couple of new players into my gaming group, our Saturday gaming group, and a bunch of people starting to ask for different kinds of tactics, and I know I've done this a while back, but I wanted to give a highlight of two of my favorite tactics for the rushing United States Air Force General. Now, we're doing these rush tactics under two real assumptions. The first one is our starting cash of $10,000. The second is that we're not going up against the Chinese Infantry General. The Chinese Infantry General is unique because their basic infantry, the minigunner, can actually shoot aircraft. That would make this a real pain in the butt. If you're going up against them, it's very important that you change your strategy and plan for the long haul, the long battle teching up and that sort of a thing. Same thing could probably be said for GLA. Um, GLA has quad cannons pretty quickly. They don't have to build power plants, so they're able to crank out some solid anti-air defense pretty quickly. The United States needing power plants is going to take us a little longer to get that ramped up. So, two assumptions. Not going up against the infantry general. Um, we have different tactics for them, like the United States Pathfinders, and you'll need to tech up a little bit to do that. But for rush tactics and $10,000, I'm happy with both of these tactics. Now, we want to also discuss build order real quick because that's important to a rushing strategy. Um, for those that don't know, a build order is what is the order that you build structures and units and that sort of a thing. In reality, for us as the United States in this tactic, it's going to be a power plant, it's going to be a supply center, and it's going to be our airfield. Those are what we're going to do for our first rush, our Comanche rush, which is my favorite. Um, the second rush we're going to do is with combat Chinooks. With that, we need a power plant, a supply center, a barracks, and a war factory. And I'll show you that when we get that far. But let's kick this thing off. What's the story? On the job. Now, for general promotions, the spy drone or the carpet bomb are two excellent choices, depending on who you're going up against. That's usually what makes me decide. So let's do a quick scan. Vanilla United States. Um, they don't have stealth structures, they don't have anything, and if you're going to plan to go with your strat center, then carpet bomb is critical. You can get rid of a lot of hardware on the enemy side with that thing. Um, or the spy drone, either way is a good choice. I'm going to go carpet bomb, depending on how our economy pans out. Now for this, I'm building everything really tight. I'm building everything really close. That means there's not a lot of land I have to defend. Second, uh, Chinook please, thank you. Uh, I'm not building any defensive structures, I'm not building any high-tech stuff, so I also am not going to bother upgrading my power plant. You'd be amazed how much one level 1 power plant will take you, considering the war factory, the airfield, take one power each, the barracks takes zero power, the firebase takes zero power, the only thing you ever need really more power for are supply drop zones, your strat center, and your super weapons. Of course, the Patriot missile system is a heavy power slug. So you're going to want to be real careful. Whoops, 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 whoops. You're going to want to be real careful when you go down that road. So we did go strat center, so I'm going to cancel that. And I'm going to throw down my strat center right there. That's going to give us a carpet bomb, which is delicious. It's absolutely worth its weight. Now, anytime I can sell this because I just needed the strat center for my carpet bomb. But I also like having my spy satellite. Okay, with our first Chinook, or Comanche, blah, go, go, go. Aim for the dozers. Dozers are, like I said, $1,000. That's a very expensive investment, especially for a human player. The cheating AI cheats, obviously. Oh, that was a nice glitch in our favor. Got another one? Go. Control groups are key, absolutely, to keep this thing going. Over here, get that. We right now have pretty complete control over their construction suite. And we've got a carpet bomb on the way. We're not expanding, we're not building up our economy, we're just really keeping it nice and tight right here. There we go, carpet bomb. Let's take out power plant, why not? Little bit of micromanagement, you can get a lot done. There we go. And now you don't have any power. That is probably the one thing that makes the Air Force General, to me, the most threatening. Absolutely, is that carpet bomb early on. 
you can get that pretty quick and really screw with a land-based economy. And by land, I mean the supply trucks, I mean the workers for GLA. And just right here, all we're doing is just keeping control. They don't have any production structures. I can take my sweet time right now expanding. I can do whatever I want. If I want to diversify my attack, we can start cranking out some Raptors. Raptors are cheaper as the United States Air Force General, and that's a good support. That'll actually help us take out their Chinooks, which is great because the Chinooks can actually attack, or the Raptors can actually attack the air. Now, like I said, this is against a hard AI. Hard AI does cheat. They do get a little bit of free money. I think they get reduced price in dozers. Their upgrades are faster. But this is just one of my favorite uh, quick, strike, quick strike actions. In addition to this, we could also have gone Stealth Comanche. And that would help out even better. And they're selling out. Fantastic. Done deal real quick it works excellent excellently against ai and human players like i said you just got to make sure you bring well actually i didn't say this so i'll say it now the trick to a rush is you have to bring enough force to knock them down and keep them down you don't need to level the base with the first strike but you have to make for darn sure you can keep them off balance if we're going up against a china and they get a gatling tower that greatly complicates things i can't just use one or two comanches to get the job done i'd have to bring some heavy artillery or something else. So there was the first one. That's one of my favorites. Comanches, piece of cake, like I said, it's it's nimble enough that you can diversify. You want to go that strat center in the carpet bomb? Perfect. You want to do stealth Comanches in the rocket pods? Take a little bit longer. It's a cheap tech upgrade when you got some Comanches on the field. Also good. This next one, we're going to do the exact same thing, except instead of building an airfield, we're actually going to build a war factory. As the United States Air Force General, that might sound counterintuitive, but we need the war factory and the supply center to get combat Chinooks. Combat Chinooks act a lot like, well, Chinooks and Humvees. They're actually Chinooks with point laser defense, which is awesome, especially against a United States player, considering the United States doesn't use Gatling. They use missiles for their first level of anti-air defense, which is perfect. So they have point defense and fire bases, or um, fire ports. It allows the infantry to shoot from the outside, and it is magical. This build is going to be a little heavier, so I might actually sell my command center. But let's see where this $10,000 takes us. Yeah. Made in the US of May. Vanilla United States again. Perfect. Um, let's get some drones out there. I may have to sell my command center, so let's just spend up those right now as we can. I like to save my command center for the last possible minute I ever decide I have to sell it. If that makes any sense. This is going to be real quick. Go. It's going to take us longer to crank out proper infantry than anything else, and that structure is quick. Now, I'm sure it's up for debate for the build order if the supply center was smarter to build first, but this is just kind of how I'm feeling at the moment. Go. Go, 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 go. That looks like a good number. And I'm going to wait for one more spy, uh, spy drone, and then I'll sell my command center. Now again, small footprint of a base. We're not looking for a ton, but right here. Yep, combat Chinook requires war factory, and we don't have a ton of cash. So do I have enough time for another one of these? Now I do. Now what we can do with the War Factory is we can queue up as many of these as we want while we have the unit, while we have the build. So I'm going to queue up another one, and then I'm going to sell the War Factory. I have the tech. I got what I want out of it. So this is also a really, really compact way to play. We're digging a bigger hole for ourselves, but basing it on an investment that we're going to be able to really kick some tail with this. All of you. Nope. Nope. Stop. You gotta be really careful with the combat Chinooks. They act as regular Chinooks first and foremost. So they're gonna really try to do supply runs and such. Let's go. Oh, I missed one, that's okay. Point laser defense for a combat Chinook and full rocket infantry, this is gonna be great. Just go. Just go, right in there. Can put you in guard mode right there. If you're feeling a little lazy, yeah, just put that in guard mode, no problem. No, over here, over here, over here, over here. Thank you for not doing other stuff. 
Now, in this position, we can completely ravage his economy. This is where this really is awesome. This goes against... This, this is perfect against the United States and China, considering China has vehicle... Uh, vehicle vehicles to get their supplies. This is less effective against GLA, considering they use infantry to get their supplies. Now, production structures are most important that we finish off, so let's go ahead and take this out. They are nowhere near Avenger tech, but Humvees with a tow missile can actually shoot up. So we want to make sure that we take care of this. This is a much heavier hitting tactic. It's more expensive, it's a little riskier, because we really have to bury our cash where it is. But now we've got, an, I mean, we have to put a lot more money as the investment. But right now we've got a really heavy hitting force. We'll easily take this guy out. We might be able to take out like another AI as well using this rush tactic. Yeah, just minimize that. If you can get that, don't worry about the infantry, thanks. And that, and I think we're done. Yep, little bit of, little bit of missile infantry coming in, that's okay. We've got point laser defense. Try to group these up. Oh, I was gonna say, it's not a bad idea if you group them up a little bit like this, and that way all their lasers will help out. Don't stack them. Don't stack them on top of each other. Missiles have splash damage. Rockets have splash damage. It'd be bad news. So here we go. Here was another example of a really, really quick rush tactic using the United States Air Force General. Most of the United States Air Force Generals I play with are turtles. They like to hunker back, build up three airfields, have 12 Aurora Alpha Bombers, or they're just Aurora Bombers. I can't get that straight. Um, 12 Aurora Bombers, and, and they just kind of sit in that little cubby of, I've got this amazing force, it's unstoppable. That's true, but the thing is, you've let your AI enemy, your human enemy, whatever, you've given them all this time to build, expand, deploy, and reposition themselves. That doesn't put you in a super duper spot either. So, either way, I wanted to share these two rush tactics with you guys as the United States Air Force General. Like I said, it's a little touch-go when it comes to GLA. It's also a little touch-go when it comes to the Chinese Infantry General. You need to scan, and that's what makes this a winning formula. You get to know what your enemy is. You can adjust accordingly. Either way, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. This is a little bit of a short vid, but I at least wanted to show those two tactics. My name is John Megacycle, and I will catch you next time.